Hi guys, happy Friday. Today is Foodie Friday and here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's autumn. It's They're starting to be leaves on the ground and so I'm wearing my leaf shirt. There's a nip in the air and I don't know about you, but it gets me thinking about warm soup and delicious fruits of our harvest. You know, apples and pears and squash and all the abundance that we get this time of year. and also spending time with our family and friends enjoying these wonderful meals. So today we're going to make a curried squash soup. Um, I happen to use acorn squash this time, but it really works with any kind of squash that you might use. Kabocha squash, butternut squash, um, pumpkin, you can use any kind of squash in this soup. And it's so easy to make and it's a little bit spicy and it's a little bit sweet, so I think you're really gonna like it. And you know, always you can adjust it so it suits your palate a little bit more. So we're gonna be using our Instant Pot pressure cooker to make this today. And so that it would go a little bit faster, I have three cups of low sodium veggie broth getting hot in the pressure cooker. And of course you can make your own. I encourage you to make your own veggie broth but I didn't have any, so I am using a low sodium one. And then the other ingredients in it are gonna be an onion, a pear, a beautiful organic pear that I chopped and peeled, an apple, this is a golden delicious apple. It really can be any kind of apple. If I had a Granny Smith, I probably would have done that. Some garlic, okay, and then some spices. We've got some cinnamon, some ginger, a little bit of cloves, ground up cloves, and curry powder. Curry powder. So this is two tablespoons of curry powder. Now you can definitely adjust that. That might be too hot for you. That might not be hot enough. And so go ahead and adjust that to whatever you like. And so what I did was I took all of those ingredients and I roasted them. So I've got an, a roasted onion, a roasted um, bunch of garlic. I've got about five cloves of garlic that I roasted because when you roast it, it makes it really mild. And I roasted a pear, I cut it into quarters and roasted it and I roasted that apple. So all of those roasted veggies are gonna go in there. And the other thing that's roasted is my acorn squash. So let me go ahead and put these in get that started we're just gonna throw it all in there because at the end we're gonna use our immersion blender and we're just gonna blend it all up okay got those onions all going into the hot water those onions are all caramely from the oven and the garlic, even though that's a lot of garlic, that's five cloves of garlic, but it's really mild because of being roasted. It's not as spicy and sharp as it was. Okay, two more things, let me grab them. This is about a pound of steamed carrots. And I could have done the carrots in the Instant Pot, that's what I usually do. I just wanted everything ready to go so that this recipe would go fast and I wouldn't waste your time. So I'm gonna throw in my pound of carrots. Okay, and then this is about a little more than a pound, right about a pound of sweet potatoes. I had a bunch of small sweet potatoes. So this is probably about two and a half cups of sweet potatoes. And I'm gonna throw that in. Can you see how this is gonna be nice and sweet as well as being spicy? It's, it's gonna be really good. Okay, finally, I'm going to show you the acorn squash. Now these acorn squash were orange and they looked like this before I um, before I roasted, you know, this is a roast, these are roasted. And then I peeled the ones on the bottom, but I wanted to show you how easy they are to peel. What you do is you cook them and then you cool them and the cooling makes the skin come away from the edge so you can peel it just like you peel an orange. See how easily that's peeling away? I just peel it right off just like it's an orange peel. 
okay? And that brown, that's not like spoilage, that's where it got roasted and it's caramelized. That's, um, so you, you want that. You definitely want that. Okay, and you wanna hmm, snitch some of this because it's really good. I don't know if you've tried acorn squash. Some people shy away from it because it's really hard to cut. As I, as I get this peeled, I'm just going to throw it on in. There's nothing fancy about this recipe. You just peel and throw, okay? So what I did was I had two acorn squashes, and I put the whole thing in the oven without... See how easily that's peeling? That peeled so easily. It's just like super easy, and it comes out in one big chunk. You can still see the lines like on a pumpkin. Okay. So I put them in the oven whole. I didn't cut them in half, two uh, acorn squashes. And then I waited until they were cooked at 400 for about a half an hour. And then I took them out of the oven and let them cool. And then I cut them in half. I just let them cool long enough to, um, so it wouldn't hurt my hand, you know, when I was cutting them in half. And then I put them back, I put them with the cut side down on the um, baking pan with a sill pat. I always use a, a silicone mat like I told you the other day so it doesn't stick and just kind of keeps the mess down. And I cooked them for another 30 minutes or so, so about an hour at 400. And that's what I did with the veggies and the um, and the pear and apple and garlic, um, the onion, the, on, uh, the garlic, the apple and the pear. I just cut them up, put them in the oven at 400 for about an hour so they were all roasted. Okay, so now it's all in there and what I'm, I'm just going to bring it up to pressure like it barely even needs it. Um, I'm probably gonna put it on three minutes. Here we go again, guys, okay. Will Heather be able to put the lid on her Instant Pot pressure cooker? Let's find out. Ta-da! <laughs> Thanks for all your tips, guys. A lot of you guys told me that I was starting over here, and I was supposed to be starting at, like, right there, and that's why it wasn't working. Okay, so I'm taking it off saute, because I had it on saute to make it be, um, to get it hot. So I'm taking it off saute. I just pushed stop. Then I'm going to put man, push manual, and I'm just going to hold on the minus button all the way down to three minutes because everything in there is already cooked. And so I don't, all I'm really doing is, is getting it hot, and I'm going to take the lid off, and I'm going to add the spices after it's all cooked. I don't know why I add the spices afterward. I just do. I, I always have done that. I think it's because, like, when you're making beans or something you don't want to um when i used to use salt you never want to add the salt until after because it'll make your beans tough that's a hint for you if you still use salt um but what i love about this recipe is it doesn't have any sugar it doesn't have any oil and it's going to come out nice and creamy and delicious um and it only has a tiny bit of salt from that low sodium veggie broth so i'm going to rinse my hands really quick hang on And I thought while it was cooking that we could talk about the holidays because some of you guys are Canadian and you just had um, your Thanksgiving. And some of us are getting into the time of year in the US when there's lots and lots of holidays. I'm just making sure I remember to put it on. Aha, I didn't put it on. I had to put it on ceiling. You have to put the vent pipe on ceiling, not on venting or it will never get up to pressure. So that was that was good that I that I checked on that. And so, you know, one thing that um, I want to tell you is stand really strong. Um, first of all, so Halloween's coming and most of us are off of sugar. Like we're not using sugar anymore. And Halloween is a really hard holiday for all of us because people's desks have candy on them 
and there's candy in all the stores and a lot of us feel like we have to get candy to give out to the kids that come in our neighborhood um, so I don't give out candy to the kids that come anymore what I do is um, I give out little toys um, and things like that like uh, little fun erasers or um, rubber balls we have like these big um, kind of big rubber balls that you can get a gross for really cheap and kids love those and they kind of they're already getting candy at everybody's house so it's kind of fun for them to get something different um, so that way it does two things I don't want to give out candy because I don't really believe in it you know I, I don't think it's really good for anyone not even kids and the other thing is I don't want it in my house you know Chef AJ says if something's in your house, it's in your mouth. And even if that's not true for you, if you have really good willpower, why put yourself through that or why take a chance that you might end up eating it? You know, we've all heard stories about people that just ate like one fun size snicker bar and they ended up going off their diet and they had a really hard time getting back on. And, and I had that last year um, where I had... A slip and and ate some things and that I shouldn't have and <clears throat> before it was over I had gained 60 pounds back you know luckily by the grace of God I've taken them off again but what if I couldn't have you know so I think it's just better not to have it in your house if you can possibly avoid it I know some people live with other people and they can't <coughs> they can't they feel like they can't avoid it or whatever but um that is something that you could maybe try is give out something different um, or give out Lara bars or give out, you know, homemade treats. A lot of people won't let their kids have homemade treats or we could do that, right? Um, or have a party and, and just have your own treats and stay away from um, all of the sugar that's out there. That's the scariest part of Halloween for me. Um, it's definitely scary for my, for my plan. And then, so then that kind of brings us to Thanksgiving. For a lot of us, Thanksgiving can be hard because the holidays have this expectation that you're supposed to be so happy and you're with your family and we're so thankful and everything. Meanwhile, that might be the only time you see certain people in your life. Um, and it might be a good reason that you don't always hang out with some people in your life. And it can be really hard. We all want to think that we have like a Hallmark card life, you know, a Pinterest life. But in real life, you know, families are messy and, and uh, relationships are hard, even with the people that we love the very most. And so it can be really difficult. And so one of the things that can make it a little bit easy for you, easier for you, if you do eat say you eat a plant-based diet like I do and you're going to be spending the holidays with people who don't eat a plant-based diet. That can be difficult. Well, the first thing I want to say is bring your own food and bring some to share. And don't be like, um, this is vegan. I hope you like it. You know, um, just make something that's delicious that anybody would like. Um, it's easy to start with foods that are holiday foods that are already vegan like cranberry sauce or um, green bean casserole or a salad um, you got to watch it with a green bean casserole you have to make it no dairy because sometimes they'll have that like cream of mushroom in it or something but there are some things that you could bring that are already a plant-based um, item you could make a pie or something like that if you know you could make a no sugar pie and not say anything you could make my cobbler or um, a pumpkin mousse or something and nobody would even know that it's sweetened with dates unless you told them so that's one thing is don't make a big deal about it um, Dr. Lyle says that when people ask you you know why are you eating like this you just say oh it's just an experiment it just seems to be working for me um, if if there are people that you're not going to see very often and you don't really care um, if they know, you know, they wouldn't understand even if you did tell them all the reasons that you are plant-based, then probably you're just going to drive yourself crazy if you try to convince somebody to be plant-based who's 
not at all interested, right? Am I right? So you I think that's a good I think that's a good solution for somebody like that. If there is someone who's like, "You look great. You look like you've lost a ton of weight. I know that you said you're feeling better. Um, you look like a new person. What are you doing? I'm sick, I'm miserable, I'm looking for answers." If they seem like they're really receptive, then that's the time that you would want to go ahead and tell them, hey, yeah, I've been on this plant-based diet and I've taken off a lot of weight and I've reversed these health conditions and have you seen the movie Forks Over Knives? Have you seen the movie What the Health? You know, um, you might want to watch Cowspiracy. You might want to watch, you know, give them some great documentaries or recommend some books. How Not to Die by Dr. Greger is one of my favorite ones because he, he writes in such a funny and approachable way. So that's the kind of person that you want to go into it with. Otherwise, you'll just be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm trying a thing. It seems to be working for me. I'm, I'm going to try it. You know, I'm just going to, I'm trying not to put in too much pounds over the holidays. So I'm trying a thing right now. Um, but just go along. It's not the time. You don't want to get into a huge debate about the ethics and everything at the dinner table. It's just going to make it unpleasant. And you're probably not going to change anybody's mind, you know, while they have a mouthful of turkey. It just probably isn't going to happen. And of course, you have to follow your heart on that. But um, I just don't think it's that effective is what I'm saying. I don't think that it would be that effective to try to do that then. Okay. Now, another thing that is important is that you come up with your... Um, own traditions and you and you make sure you take care of yourself because you're going to be stressed out and a lot of people are broke this time of year and a lot of people get sick and they get colds and their immune system goes down and um, the weather can get really nasty outside and you don't see the sun so really take care of yourself make sure you're getting enough sleep make sure you're getting nutritious food make sure that you're not you know staying out and going to all the parties and just trying to cram it all in. We have to go to every single holiday event. That can take the holiday right out of the holidays, you know? Like, it's supposed to be a fun time. It's supposed to be enjoyable. And sometimes it can feel like a march to the death, you know, to, to get to the new year. Um, so don't forget to take care of yourself. Lots of sleep, good food. Remember why you're doing this. Enjoy your family. Um, try to make great traditions for your kids. Just slow down, you know? Like, you instead of standing in line three hours to see Santa and then being like, now you smile or whatever, um, maybe it would be more fun to like not have the Santa picture, but you guys spend that time like reading books or coloring or making cards for veterans in a veterans hospital. Make some Christmas cards together or, you know, make your, decorate and you know, let your kids color um, pictures and then put that in the uh, Christmas cards instead of that family newsletter or whatever. Uh, people, that will bring so many smiles. You might want to go to like a nursing home or a care home or something like that and just bring some holiday treats to the people that live there or um, you know a lot of times they just love to see families um, and they just love to get visitors so that could be something really cool that you do I know on Christmas morning my favorite thing that I do me and my kids my kids are adults we go to a uh, breakfast for the homeless and for families that's put on um, by the Girl Scouts and we have the most fun time because all the toys that are donated at toy drives they end up at events like these and we get to go while the kids eat breakfast we get to go and ask them what they wanted Santa to bring them for Christmas and then we get to go get it like the toys have been donated and we go in the back and we go match the toy with the kid and so I get to be like Santa so it's super fun and then you know we eat um, vegan Mexican food <laughs> that's our tradition we do the we go to the Christmas breakfast we don't eat the breakfast because it's like an egg and bacon type of breakfast but that's not why we're there we go for the fun and then we have our special meal afterward so I guess what I'm saying is just make your own way and make it make it work for you 
let me just check on the soup and, and see how we're doing. I think we're just going to skip to the end. It's taking a long time, but basically you would do the pressure cooker. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off and see if it'll open. Yeah, it'll open still. So you would do it for, it's all, it was almost there. You would do it for three minutes. So let's just pretend like I did, okay? You are pretending that we did it for three minutes. Okay, I'm going to add the spices and then we're going to blend it up and see what you guys think. Okay, so it's super easy. You want to do just a teaspoon of the cinnamon. So I'm going to do a teaspoon of cinnamon. There we go. Got a little extra in there, but that's just fine. Teaspoon of ginger. It's so sweet and yummy, it almost comes out like a dessert. Teaspoon of ginger. Just a sprinkle of cloves. Just a little bit. Sprinkle, sprinkle, okay. And then this is that curry powder. Just use your own favorite curry powder. Um, I got this one at, a, at an Indian shop that we have here and I like it because it's not super hot. I am kind of a wimp. I like a little bit spicy, but I don't like it crazy spicy. Okay, so I'm going to put it in there. All right. Now, everything is still all chunky because it didn't, um, it's all cooked and it's boiling away nicely. Okay. Let me take you over to see it. Come with me. Come and see. Here we go. So that's what it looks like. It just has the spices and everything's all chunky in there. Okay. So now I'm going to use, we're using two of our fun toys today because we get to use the immersion blender. So here's the immersion blender. Okay. First you drop your immersion blender. All right. So there's a high and a low on an immersion blender. You want to do low and you want to make sure, because this is really hot, you don't want to get hurt. So you just kind of go up and down. And don't let it squirt you because it's super hot. This is not something that kids should do. Even though it's super fun, it's adult fun. Well, not that kind of adult fun. It's a different kind of adult fun. Okay, once it's all kind of smushed up, then you can go to higher. It's turning a beautiful orange color. It's really pretty. A lot longer but I want to show you what it looks like and I also wanted to show you some ways that you might want to present it so I have um, this bowl that was my mother's I just love it you know that's what I'm talking about like your little traditions that make you happy so I could put it in this beautiful bowl and serve it that way and again it'll look a lot better when <laughs> when it's all smooth and everything, and if I didn't get it all over the edge. But isn't that pretty? That would be a pretty way to present it, okay? Or I have, my kids gave me last year, I just love this. It's a pumpkin bowl, a squash bowl for a squash soup. So I could put it in there, and it's got a place for the terrine to, um, for the little spatula, okay? And so if you were serving it on Thanksgiving or to a company or something, you might want to put it in something beautiful. I am going to put it how I usually have it, which is mm, <laughs> yummy, yummy. Oh my goodness. In a mug. See the steam? There it is. The pretty orange squash um, soup in the beautiful in the blue mug. I like the way it looks together. Gotta blow it because look how hot it is. And that didn't even pressure cook. Okay. 
Mm. It's really yummy. I think I could even make it almost a tiny bit spicier, like a tiny bit more curry powder, but you want to go easy. Like start with just a small amount of curry powder and then get get more adventurous after you know that you like it because you can always put more in, but you can't take it out and you don't want to ruin it. Mm. Okay, so if it's too thick, you can always add like a plant milk. That um, That's really good. I know a lot of people like it creamy like that. If it's um, too thin, then you just know that you use less liquid next time. Mm. Try some delicious squash soup. You can do it with any kind of squash. Like I said, butternut or kabocha or acorn squash, like whatever's on sale. And don't be scared of squash. Just bake it without cutting it, then let it cool, then cut it in half and finish baking it. Take the seeds out and everything. That way you don't have to try to cut through a super hard squash. All right, love you guys. Happy beginning of the holiday season. Hang tough. Stay away from that candy. Stay away from that candy. And have some soup instead. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.